I'm standing inside of a supermarket, and I can't find anything that I need. I'm a cordon bleu graduate, just moved to Washington, D.C. from Paris, and I want to make, what a cliché, chocolate mousse, and I can't find anything. I'm running up and down those big supermarket corridors, looking for chocolate that has cocoa in it, and I can't find it. I can't find cream that I can actually make whipped cream out of, and I can't find real butter. It was all substitutes. Now, you read the title. This talk is going to be all about farmer's markets and green tomatoes and fresh carrots. So why am I talking to you about chocolate? It's because it was really a great example of the industrialization process of our food system and how we got disconnected from the source of real food, even if it's real chocolate. And let's be honest, when we go to a supermarket today, when you pick up an apple from the shelf, it's a really black hole of knowledge. You don't know anything about it. You don't know if it's imported or not. You don't know who grew it. You don't know how he grew it. You don't know when it was picked, and you don't know for how long it's been sitting there. But let's go back to D.C. I was a chef, and I needed a place to shop. So that's how I discovered the DuPont Circle Farmer's Market in Washington, D.C. It was really like an amusement park for me. I used to go every week, and I loved going back with different things every time to discover different varieties of pumpkins I never knew existed and go back home and experiment and meeting cheesemakers from the Washington area and them telling me all about their wonderful cheese. And that was the place where I had the best apples, crisp, sweet apples I've ever tasted. All things must end, right? So I went back to Israel, the desert. You're laughing, but to be honest, it was really a desert, culinary-wise. I worked then in a food magazine, and I remember myself flipping over the pages of these cookbooks from abroad and food magazines and just being so jealous of this wonderful produce that wasn't available to me. I remember the story of a very important Israeli chef who went to the Ranjis market. This is the big market in Paris. And he was ravishing the produce. He looked at this one eggplant and said, why, why don't we have such amazing eggplants in Israel? And then he looked at the fine print, and you know what was written there, right? It was grown in Israel. <laughs> so, of course, land of agriculture, I knew that Amazing varieties of tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers were being grown in the south of Israel. And wonderful varieties of fruits and berries were grown in the north. But the Israeli customer could not get them. So why couldn't we get fresh carrots and blackberries in the supermarket? It's because of what we call the supermarket economy. Basically, most of the food today in the world travels food miles. And in order for this quantity of food to be able to go through this cold chain of transportation and refrigeration, as you can see here, it must be harvested early. So it doesn't ripen naturally. And in order for it to go through this process and in the end look like it should be, even if it's without the nutrients and the taste, it must be modified. Sometimes it needs to be refrigerated up to a year in supermarkets. In a farmer's market, what we do, what this simple model does, is that it cuts this cold chain short. It's a simple win-win model that basically helps you bring fresh produce from the local farm to the city, sell it to the customer without a middleman. It can be as fresh as possible. It can be as gentle as possible. It can be in small quantities, special variety. Anything goes. So, as you can understand, a farmer's market in Israel was needed. And thus, the journey to start the first farmer's market began. Myself and my co-founder, Michal, went on this journey all over Israel to find those good, clean and fair producers and farmers. On the road, we found out problems that are happening today all over the world, that small farmers and producers of cheese, of bread, of any kind of great food, 
are disappearing, are just fading away. They can't compete with the big chains. I remember the first farmer's market in May 2008. We had eight stalls. We started with eight stalls and eight skeptical producers. I remember myself standing at the corner having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> and I especially remember one of our farmers, Ori Rabinovich. We brought him because he grew these amazing kinds of uh, potatoes, French potatoes we were amazed to see were being grown in Israel. Those are ugly ducklings kind of potatoes. They're small, covered with dirt, but tastes wonderful. One tastes like butter, and the other one tastes like chestnuts. And it's purple. But he was skeptical. He was working with the big chains there. So he brought this huge pile of industrial, round, full of water potatoes you all know. He was sure those ugly ducklings weren't going to sell. And at the end of the first market, this huge industrial pile was still there, intact. And those little quantities of wonderful, small varieties of potatoes were gone. He was still skeptical. But for us, the message was clear. People were looking for a new consumer experience. They wanted to rediscover taste. They wanted to rediscover new varieties, and they wanted to reconnect with the source of food, with the person who makes it, who grows it. After that, since then, our market became an amusement park for special varieties, and our farmers grow each year more and more, like these colored beets you see here, like colored carrots, a yellow watermelon, old varieties, ancient varieties, and new developments. This is important. It's important to say why it is important to grow so many varieties when you realize that 75% of food varieties in the world today are gone. They are vanishing. And what we are left with are generic, easy-to-grow, mass-produced varieties that you can grow all over the world that has no connection to local heritage, to a local place, or to taste. And it's not only the varieties, it's also the people who grow it, the producers themselves, cheesemakers and bread makers, and their traditions of making the food. Since then, almost six years has gone by, and eight stalls became 60. And a weekly market became an indoor market in 2010, the port market, that has more than 100 producers that works all week long and that has more than 10,000 regular customers. 100 may sound like a small number, but when you realize that each and every one of these producers is a world of tradition, of family, of tastes, you realize it's a real revolution. So let's remember what a really good tomato tastes like. And let's put this fresh carrot in a new dramatic perspective. Because buying in a farmer's market is not just buying in a farmer's market. It's a private consumer choice that has an impact on your society, on your community, and on your environment. It can really revolutionize our food system, and by that, the world. Thank you.